Live from the spectacular Garden Roots in South Africa. We're streaming worldwide on eradiosa.com. It is Travel Tuesday right here on E-Radio and a very big hello to Travel Bug Rose. How are you, Rose? Hello, I'm fine in yourself. I'm good, I'm good. How's, how's, the, how's the week been? It's only Tuesday. Oh, it's only Tuesday. Yeah, it's, uh, it's been... Um, good actually I had an excellent weekend a little busy weekend but today we uh, yeah um, Sunday we took a drive out to uh, the Karoo on motorbikes um, and explored the back roads of the Karoo a little bit discovered a little place called Eagles Fall Country Lodge which is like um, in between uh, it's, it's not so far from the Longcliff but it's about 96 k's from from Sedgeville I think mm. uh, um, or from wilderness, yeah, uh, along the long cliff road, and then you go into the mountains, into the Kamanasi mountains. Oh my goodness, beautiful place, um, lovely, friendly people. You know, the Kuru people always seem to be such such warm people, yeah, very warm, <laughs> just like the weather, yeah, <laughs> exactly. Well, that sounds yeah, fantastic. So, and, yeah, it's excellent. Um, we definitely, I think about, I think we spoke about this before, but I think about 80% of our back roads are at gravel. So there's lots of exploring you can do on the back roads with those type of things. Yeah. Lacquer. Excellent. Now, Rose, today we're talking about your favorite and the best stop and go viewpoints in uh, the garden route. Looking forward to it. Yeah. So I was thinking to myself, um, there's um, a lot of times that people are actually driving through the garden route, uh, you know, regardless of which direction they're coming from, and what is like the most, the best, the easiest kind of viewpoints you can quickly stop at and have a look over a place. Um, <clears throat> you know, a lot of people actually just driving through a place, and once they get to a viewpoint, uh, they see more of a place than than normal. So yeah, so. Um, shall we start in Mossel Bay again? <laughs> it's totally up to you. <laughs> well, Mossel Bay, um, my favorite place in Mossel Bay is basically the point. I mean, you can't, uh, you can't not go to the point of yeah. um, Mossel Bay. And then walking up to the cave, which is part of the St. Blaise Trail. And uh, those little... The walks along along there are quite nice, but the, the the cave is a very nice quick stop. It gives you a little bit of history of the area, and also gives you an, a nice view of the whole point of Mossel Bay and over the Bay of Mossel Bay. And um, if you want to stop for a quick ice cream and head along again, that's quite nice. So Mossel Bay Cave is definitely one at the point of Mossel Bay. Oh yeah, and the other one, let's go back a little bit more. There is a place called Franz Mons Hook. But it's not really on the way. But if you have time to drive off the in, what are we? The in one, in two, yeah, in two. two. If you, uh, yeah, if you get time to drive off the in two and you head towards Fleersby, um in in the Harris area, and there's a place called Franz Mons Hook. And Franz Mons Hook is quite a interesting place as well because it they call it Franz Mons Hook due to the French ships that used to. Um, stop there and they used to trade with the locals and that's why it's called Fleersby because Fleersby was where they actually traded for meat so Ooh. in that little bay so far as talking. yeah <laughs> and then from that point I have had the most beautiful um, whale sightings I've also had seen some sharks from up there some orcas from up there so yeah it's quite a nice it's a uh, it's not much around the area it's got a tiny little beach as well but it's really really pretty once once look and yeah, and then we move on to closer to a George area. I think the favourite viewpoint in the George area is probably the one that's go that you as you go up the Otanico Pass. There is a few there, but my favourite one is the one that you can actually see all four passes. So you can see the Otanico Pass, you can see the Oxwantra Pass, you can see the um, Montague Pass, and then there's another old trail that also that you can actually see. So you see all four passes all at once. Um, yeah, and uh, the Otanico Pass is a really nice little drive as well so yeah that's one of my other favorite viewpoints if you're coming from that direction 
And then uh, let me try and think about George. George. Uh, then we go on to Big Bay, and then of course, as we come into wilderness, we get Dolphins Point. And Dolphins Point is a very, very popular stop mm. because it's mm. a place where you kind of. As you approach the garden, as I call it the Eden section, because the minute you go through Dolphins Point all the way to just before Nisa, it's got this beautiful, I don't know, nice energy. So you go stop at, at Dolphin Point, and uh, you can see the old Caymans, um a railway bridge, and uh, which is quite a spectacular view in its own. And then you can walk underneath um, the, bri- the road and you can go to the other side as well. And you can see a view, the whole view of the wilderness beach and uh, the point. And it's the reason why it's called Dolphin Point because there's sometimes loads of dolphins in that area. And of course, if you look up, you can see the paragliders fly over your head as well. Mm, mm. So that's that one. <laughs> And then um, we're getting a little bit closer to Sagis, and Sagis, of course, is got the most spectacular place. Uh, Cloud Nine must be one of the most most beautiful viewpoints for me. Yeah. One really one of the most beautiful viewpoints because it it shows the whole of Sagefield, but it's it shows Kirikas and all the tones and colours of that area actually makes a nice little mix. You get this soft blues and greens. And those browns that always makes it always reminds me of a painting kind of thing so when mm. you go up to cloud nine just mm. sit there and it's a lovely stop if you if you're driving through these little chairs and tables or logs that they've put out there um on the side of the paragliding launch site which is quite nice for people just to quickly sit there and enjoy the view and uh, you can watch if there's people flying you can watch them fly or you can just enjoy the view as well so that's cloud nine and then as we're going along, of course, Nisner has got, I've got two favorites in Nisner. Nisner is, one is Margaret's viewpoint, um, which is the one that she drive, drive up to, to Brenton. And it kind of stops on the side of the road and you can overlook the whole of the estuary and, the, and Nisner uh, with the heads in the foreground. That's quite a lovely, and it's, um, I think it's a um, place where plenty of people just kind of stop and just chill out. And then um, if you drive a little bit further up the road, just before you go down and paint on sea, there's another viewpoint on the side of the road um, where they watch, they do actually the whale spotting from, which look overlooks the Buffalo Bay again. And um, I have have sat there in plenty of time where I've kind of seen a whale or two breach because, I mean, at, in whale season, that's quite a popular bay for the whales. I quite like that area. And uh, in early May or late in May, the southern right also, they come in there to May, so you can actually watch them from the top there. Mm. Then um, uh, if you're going into Nisner, Nisner, of course, the heads. Um, right at the top, that viewpoint is also one of the most beautiful. I mean, that geological formation is just incredible to watch. Uh, just, yeah. you know, we've got a few amazing geological formations in this country, and I definitely classify the Nisner Heads as um, as one of them. Um, the hole in the wall, Nisner Heads, uh, Cape Town <laughs> Mountain, you know, and uh, the Hrofenet. Uh, the de- Valley of Desolation, and then of course, um, Berg's Luck up in, in Mapumalanga. But so those, I think, definitely is like my big five um, viewpoints in South Africa. But the Nisner heads, the geological uh, formations of those heads, and the views from up there and down there is just incredible. So if you actually have some time, go and do some reading up about the heads and geological formation. It's part of the Holland Touch mountain range. Uh, <clears throat> you know, it's Scotland where of where they moved the mountains moved from the on Antarctic um, fault line up towards the thing forming those beautiful formations. Sure. So yeah, and then um, towards Plet, Plet, um, there is a place that's where, where they keep the well tile. I'm not exactly sure what the street is called, but I know that if you drive past the old church, you, from the main road you drive toward past this old church there, then you could turn out to the left, there's a lookout point there. I think it's called Lookout, Plet Lookout Point, and go and find that. That also looks over the estuary, the Bitto estuary. And um, plenty of time you can actually sit there and you watch the surfers on the one side and you watch the 
um, the paddlers, on the boat people on the other side. It's uh, also like this, you know, the estuaries when they go to low tide, they almost look like pudding and they like wind themselves <laughs> all over the place. It's really pretty. <laughs> Rose, um, yeah. when last did you go to um, Jubilee Creek? Uh, I was here the other day. I did a, a barefoot hiking walk for someone there. I okay. Took them into the forest. Yeah. I haven't been there in ages. So it oh, it's a really lovely place. Have you? But talking about sand parks and those places, have you? You should really try and do Spitzkop as well. Spitzkop. Spitzkop is a bit of a drive. Yeah, Spitzkop is a bit of a drive towards the um, Prince Alfred Pass. And oh. you, it was the lookout lookout point where they used to look out for fires. But actually, you got a 360 view. You can see plate from there. You can see the knives and the heads from there. It's incredible. Sure. That is really, really a, a beautiful view. Yeah, oh, that's incredible. Listen, Rose, how can we follow you on social media and and see what you're up to? Um, well, you're welcome to follow my Instagram account. My Instagram account is at Go Travel Book. Um, I think that's probably my most favorite is my Instagram account. And then, of course, my Facebook account. Uh, but most of my pay, uh, my uh, Instagram st- uh, story or Instagram information goes into my Travel Bug Rose page on Facebook. You're welcome to go and follow there. Or just click on my website, which is www.gotravelbug.co.za. And then you do the occasional TikTok. Oh, yeah. Yeah, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think I'll have, uh, for my sins, I've started TikTok. Um, <laughs> it's also, I uh, also, um, and besides the stupid stuff on there, I'm starting to share some of the garden information on there. Um, and also sharing our beautiful area. Um, you know, people, people follow you and watch what you do, then you might as well just share some beautiful information of your area as well. Exactly. And of course, Twitter, yeah. Yeah. What did you say, Rose? I said, yeah, I mean, I can't remember. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. A bit of feedback on the line today, but it's fine. Uh, thanks, as always, Rose. And uh, we'll talk to you uh, next Tuesday at 2 o'clock on uh, Travel Tuesday. Hope you're going to uh, enjoy the rest of your afternoon. Thank you. I definitely will. Thanks. Um, going to try and relax a bit this afternoon. I've got some stuff to do. <laughs> yeah, please go and relax a bit. Okay, I'll talk to you later. Cheers, Rose. Bye now.